Ladies, don't waste your money on these items. I'm serious. You have to watch this video because I'm going to share with you the items that I really think are a waste of money. And if you watch until the end, you will know the number one item that most girls go and buy immediately that I think is a total waste of money. So make sure you watch until the end. My dear elegant ladies, welcome back and also big welcome to my elegant newcomers. This channel is about a transformation, about elegance and about navigating successfully with the upper class. If you want to start your transformation today, visit my online finishing school, schoolofaffluence.com. Before I jump into these luxury items, I just need to explain one really important thing. And you really have to understand that I talk about high society, the upper class, and it's literally a big group of affluent people. But in this whole big general pond of rich people, you have all kinds of different communities. And it's really a personal choice what community within this community you want to be associated with. My students, I tell them it's about your goals in the end of the day. What do you want to get out of this journey? So you have to kind of strategize that way. But I teach kind of more of a general approach. I take a few things from, let's say, the old money, the nouveau riche, the secret millionaire and billionaires, and I kind of just put it all together. However, if I had to choose, I would probably choose a community that are not very flashy, that are more discreet and more elegant and have good values and act with manners and sophistication. And that's pretty much the high society that I refer to when I speak in these terms. But you can, of course, choose differently. So for this reason, those things that I'm going to mention now, they are really applicable if you want to be somebody who is not acting very nouveau riche. So now perhaps you will understand how I was thinking when putting together this list. So let's start with number one. And number one is ready-to-wear fashion. If you do not know what ready-to-wear fashion is, it's basically those pieces that the designer presents on the catwalk. You also have haute couture, but haute couture is a little bit different. That is more made to measure. Majority of the times, if you're buying designer items, you're probably buying pieces that are not coming from the catwalk, but that are still high quality, still expensive and so on. But the kind of runway pieces are more special and oftentimes more expensive. I would say do not buy a ready to wear fashion because it is a bit of a waste of money. You can of course buy a few pieces, if you love something, if you know that you will be wearing this, then definitely invest in ready to wear. But oftentimes it's something very seasonal. It's something that is just a trend currently, maybe it's going to last a few seasons, but not more than that. And spending a lot of money on catwalk pieces, it is a waste of money. A lot of kind of nouveau riche high society women might do that because it is of a statement. But majority of upper class women that I know, they just find ready to wear fashion to be a waste. And it's all about the mindset. It's all about which community in the elite community you belong to. The old money, the secret millionaire and billionaires, they really tend to think in a way where be thoughtful of how you spend your money, even if you have loads of them. Whilst the nouveau riche, they're more about making a statement. So buying ready to wear, sure, it is a statement. The only exception I would make are the fashionista women. They don't necessarily need to be affluent, but oftentimes, you know, they are if they're going to afford ready to wear. They would buy them because they're collecting, because, you know, they it's their job or it's their hobby or they just see it as art. That is something that is totally different. I'm talking about women who are affluent or women who are striving to level up. Don't waste your money on ready to wear. Now, number two on my list, ladies, let's talk watches. I am personally not a big, you know, watch, jewelry type of person. I'm not even a big bag or shoe lady either. But one question that I do get asked a lot, what watch should you buy in the beginning when you are just kind of starting your leveling up journey? And the truth is, that is my opinion. I don't think a watch or jewelry is actually that important. Surely some will disagree and depending on culture, you know, it's really up to you. In some cultures, let's say India, there you really make a statement with your jewelry. Whilst in like, let's say Northern Europe where I'm from, you know, who cares about jewelry? 
truly spend your money elsewhere. I would say do not buy like a Chanel watch, Gucci watch, you know, kind of, what can I say, like a mid-range type of watch. You have even lower end watches like a Swatch watch or you have like a Michael Kors watch. Those are like, no, <laughs> do not even go there. I would say if you are not yet able to afford a watch that has a bit of a better statement to them, then wait. Wait until you can maybe buy a Cartier watch, Rolex watch, um, Patek, whatever. I mean, of course, all these watches, they cost a lot of money and kind of designer watches like Chanel, Gucci, whatever. Like if you compare them to these more established watch brands, then it just feels like a mid-range watch, right? And they don't really have any resale value. And it's almost like, you know, buying jewelry at Chanel or buying jewelry at Cartier. It's the same thing. You rather buy a watch from Cartier than you buy a watch from Chanel. So for that reason, do not waste your money. If you don't yet afford any of these watches that I'm talking about, just wait. Patience is king. Plus, you know, it's not that urgent. I don't think having a watch or having, I don't know, a bracelet or earrings, I don't think it's an urgent thing to invest in but it's a personal choice. I am more of a minimalistic person. I don't really like to wear loads of things on myself, so maybe I'm also a little bit biased when I give this advice, but that's just my two cents. But as I'm talking about jewelry, might as well continue this topic. On my number three, I'm actually listing the Cartier Love Bracelet, and I'm also wearing it. When it comes to the Cartier Love Bracelet, obviously it has become a bit, a bit too mainstream. You can see it on everybody. You don't even have to be affluent to wear it. I've had issues with my bracelet. The screws were coming off all the time, and you know, for the amount of money it costs, you feel this is, shouldn't even happen, but it does happen. And a lot of people are complaining that there are issues with this bracelet. But if I can kind of share my own thoughts on this bracelet, it kind of has a little bit of a meaning to it. So oftentimes your boyfriend or your husband would buy you a love bracelet. That's for instance, how it was in my case. So for this reason, I think there's nothing wrong with wearing a love bracelet. I think it's a nice it's a nice gift. It's something that I personally appreciate wearing because every time I look at my Cartier bracelet, I always think about my partner. But I personally don't think that you should go and buy yourself a love bracelet just to have it as an accessory and status of wealth. I think you can spend your money more wisely than that. Unless it has a special meaning to you, this bracelet, don't waste your money number four, which is actually certain luxury cars that are just not worth the money. A lot of people who are a bit nouveau riche, the first thing they do is buying themselves a flashy car. Now, this is usually more common with men, but one thing that I've seen women do even worse, and this is more the, what can I say, the little bit tacky woman, if I can say so, the one who goes and gets like a pink Porsche, and it just looks so incredibly cheesy. They kind of think that it signals wealth because, you know, the color is custom made or something like that. I would say definitely stay away from that. You don't want to drive a cheesy car. I'm personally not a big fan of luxury cars. I personally don't like sports cars. I think they're uncomfortable. It's really hard entering a sports car. They're really low. I don't like driving that low on the ground. I like to be high up. A lot of people think that in order to put on their status and be part of a society, they have to have a Lambo, a Ferrari. Okay, sure, you can if that's what you want. Like always purchase something you always dreamt of and always wanted, why not? It fulfills you in one way or another. But also take into account, like why am I buying this? I think we forget the why sometimes. And of course, we want to kind of be associated and seen in a certain way. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I think it's a normal thing. But I don't think always that, you know, driving a Lamborghini is what's going to say that you have made it. I personally think it becomes too much. Again, like with a pink car, it's cheesy. It's too stereotypical. You want to be affluent and you want to have the status of an affluent person, but you don't want to go cheese mode, right? You want to have a bit of class to you. And class is when you have status symbol that 
is never too much. And with cars, it can easily be too much. Some cars are less than others. It really depends where you are, what your values are, and also what community you're part of. Ladies, number five, let's talk a bit of beauty. And let's talk about luxury skincare brands. And I'm talking now specifically like brands like uh, La Mer, like La Prairie. A cream from these type of brands can cost like 200, some can even cost like four or 500. But I personally think, because I have used these creams, not really worth the money. A lot of times these brands, they actually have the exact same formula of the product like a cheaper brand has. You buy a formula from a skincare product that is doing well on the market, it can be whatever price range, you know, it can be a lower, it can be a mid, it can be a higher up. And then you just like add your own marketing to it. So in the end, with these brands, you're paying for marketing. We automatically think that the more price we pay, the higher, you know, ingredients we will get, the higher, you know, technology and research that will be behind these creams, let's say, or whatever it is that we're buying. But actually it's not. And that's when we're fooling ourselves. So that's why it's really important to educate yourself. What type of ingredients are good? You have to kind of educate yourself with what are just filler ingredients like silicones or what are actual ingredients that are there to actually make a difference. When I say looking expensive, I don't necessarily mean that you have to go and look nouveau riche. No. When I say we want to look expensive, we want to look like high caliber woman. So that was how I was thinking when I put together this cheat sheet, how to look expensive. And it really caters for all budgets in mind. So you can go to classycheatsheet.com and you can download this cheat sheet. It's absolutely free of charge. I also have a masterclass connected to this cheat sheet that you can just sign up for. So visit classycheatsheet.com, ladies. So what I wanted to say with looking expensive is that when people go travel, they think that they have to buy Louis Vuitton suitcases if they want to be kind of elite travelers. You have, of course, a lot of affluent people who have Louis Vuitton suitcases, but I personally would not buy Louis Vuitton suitcases, and I don't think you should either. Number one, it's a waste of money. Number two, if you have the one where there's a light leather, it oftentimes just gets stained and looks horrible after a while. And number three, you are really exposing yourself for a higher risk of getting your luggage stolen. When I travel, I travel only with removal luggage because they are truly the best. They are so easy to roll, they are so durable. Plus, what's really nice is that they're discreet bags. So that's why I would never buy a monogram or like designer labeled luggage. And when your luggage is being handled by other people, the last thing you want is to drag any unnecessary attention. Number seven, and let's talk about my favorite Balenciaga Triple S shoe or any other current seasonal trendy shoe. Like right now we have the Bottega Veneta one. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of being a little bit sarcastic when I said my favorite Balenciaga Triple S shoes. I personally do not think it's really worth spending money on very seasonal footwear that are super hyped, that everybody's buying, wearing, and uh, raving about. Some of these shoes don't even make sense to me, which is why I'm kind of making fun of this whole Balenciaga Triple S trend. But actually that trend has now died and we barely see that shoe anymore. Thank God. Why waste that money for something that you cannot wear anymore? This is not sustainable fashion. And this is why I believe so much in classic fashion because it's a more sustainable way of consuming fashion and you can just wear it season after season. You will never throw it away. Number eight, the fur coat. Now, it's probably obvious why I am going to put fur on this list because actually fur is not very fashionable anymore coming out in a full fur. It's very kind of show-offy, very nouveau riche. Okay, the Russians, they do it and they will probably forever do it. I get it, Russia is cold. But ladies, you know, with sustainable fashion, with us being more and more conscious of how we treat our planet, coming out in a full fur these days really makes you look like an idiot. I'm sorry, but you do. I have explained in previous videos that I still use coats that have fur trimmings. Yes, that's also bad, 
but I'm not saying I'm perfect here. I personally think it's more extreme to wear a full fur compared to a little bit of fur trimmings. That's just how I reason, but I'm not trying to say that that's okay. I draw my line with full fur. It's not very ethical to wear fur these days. And thank God we're moving now more to a more ethical society. So number nine, ladies, and actually it's a little bit also kind of trendy, kind of from the runway, kind of seasonal, whatever, but the kind of Prada headband or the thick clip accessory, some hairpiece that is currently so much in fashion and everybody's wearing it, everybody. Like when I went to Hotel Cost during Paris Fashion Week, oh my God, all the kind of fashion victims sitting there with their you know, Prada headbands, it just looked ridiculous. These items, they don't even stay for very long. They literally stay for a few months, then they're overdone. And the reason why they stay so short time is because they are so affordable, so accessible, that the flame burns very strong, very big, very fast, and dies very quick. So of course, with other type of fashion, like the Balenciaga Triple S shoe, it was a little bit more expensive, so, it the flame burned a little bit longer whilst the Prada headband okay it was 2019 and that's it do not waste your money on these things and especially don't go and buy one now you are not going to be seen as high fashion you will be seen as somebody who is behind fashion so spare your money <laughs> so we have a right to number 10. i bet i will be getting some hate for saying this but ladies the chanel flat bag it is so basic right now okay i need to tell you this so i used to have a chanel flat bag like I don't even remember. It was many years ago I owned one and I decided to sell it, which I did because I just saw everybody was wearing it and I felt nothing special when I wore it. So a few years passed and was standing in the Chanel store and was thinking about buying the Chanel flat bag in beige actually. And I was so close of just like taking out my card and say, okay, let me get it. It's classic. It will always last. It will always be used and so on. But then I just looked at it and I, uh, I just felt so put off because everything that I was just seeing in front of me were all these basic plain Janes and nothing wrong with being a basic plain Jane ladies. It's not about that. I don't want to be judgmental, but Chanel is a respected brand. When you start seeing everybody wearing this bag, Chanel branding is starting to decline, you see? And that's kind of what Hermes has, do, has been doing right, but you know, also everybody these days have a Hermes bag, so their brand is also a little bit on the decline, but not as much as Chanel. I just think that buying the Chanel flat bag is probably one of the most basic luxury items you can buy right now. I don't think it's worth buying the flat bag that everybody's wearing and you're paying like over 5,000 for it, when you can buy loads of other nice bags or nothing wrong with buying a Chanel bag. I'm talking now the flat bag because it's just overly done. I think if you're going to spend that much money, then buy yourself a more unique piece, something that not everybody's going to be running around with. I will continue buying Chanel. I will just not buy the classic models, at least not for now, maybe in the future or maybe if it's a very specific color. Just that the black one, the beige one, I think they're overdone. All I wanna say is that if you have this bag, wear it, do whatever you want, but if you are thinking of buying it, I would recommend buy another bag. Having said all this, ladies, you know, don't be label obsessed. Don't think that if you're gonna be part of the elite society, you have to do what the Nouveau Riche does. Nothing wrong with doing a little bit of Nouveau Riche. I do some Nouveau Riche things, you know, it's normal. After all, I don't come from money, so... But I think that it's good to move away from the label obsession, from everything has to be so bling bling, so showy, so in your face. Like, let's move away from that. That's why I talk so much about elegance on this channel, because I went in with a mindset before, like, yes, show off, show them you're rich. It's so, you know, it's gonna put you on the map but it really doesn't. It just makes you look so cheesy. So I wanna pass on this message to you and think about what you're spending on. And sometimes it's just not worth spending on those luxury items because you are just going to end up looking cheesy, nouveau riche, and is that really what you want? Or do you wanna be more elegant? Ladies, have you watched my video, these luxury bags are not classy? I'm actually not mentioning the Chanel bag in there, but I'm mentioning loads of other bags. So watch that video now and I will see you there.